App Engine Studio. Three very little words generating a very large amount of buzz in the ServiceNow community. And, might I add, for a very good reason. Perhaps you've heard of this buzz and are seeking to learn more about this tool. Perhaps you've arrived here after seeing my first video, Defining App Engine Studio. Perhaps you've seen that and you're seeking to learn more. If either of those are true, you are in the right place. In this short video, I will be guiding you through how to build your first app using App Engine Studio, one of the two development environments that ServiceNow offers designed purposefully for the low and no code audience. My name is Laura McManaman. I'm a seven year member of the ServiceNow community and your developer advocate of the day. And with that being said, let's jump right in. As a quick refresher, App Engine Studio, also affectionately known as AES, is a development tool for creators of varying skill levels, allowing them to build applications that meet the immediate needs of enterprises of various sizes. AES is accessible like every other application on ServiceNow through the Application Navigator. With the intention of setting up new developers with the ServiceNow best practices from the beginning of their developer journey, you can see that from even the homepage, this is exemplified in a variety of ways. As opposed to leaving the platform to gain assistance or documentation, these types of things are now embedded directly into App Engine Studio. If you're seeking great examples, for custom apps and various ways that ServiceNow can address real life business problems, there's also the addition of templated applications. In addition to being a phenomenal learning tool, these template apps are actually fully functional custom apps as well. You can deploy them at any given time, both the ones that we supply and even templates that you eventually can create yourself and are a great tool for assessing an internal audience or internal customer for how their lives could be greatly improved through use of ServiceNow's custom applications. Let's try out this time off template application as an example. First and foremost, developers can set up scopes for their various applications. Scopes essentially act as your app's membrane, securely letting the right users and information in and out. Within each scope, developers are then presented with the four pillars of app development, data, experiences, automation, and security, the true cornerstones of any phenomenal ServiceNow custom app. As you can gather, these pillars are generally organized in the recommended order of operations, but developers have the flexibility to begin wherever they prefer. The first pillar is data. To create a table, someone need only have a spreadsheet and ServiceNow can basically do the rest. Once established from a single screen, the developer can not only further customize the database, but simultaneously design the initial interface that users will use and even the automation surrounding this data. But that's coming up here in a bit, no spoilers. <laughs> the second pillar is experience, AKA the user interfaces that we will provide to interact with our databases. From App Engine Studio, we offer a multitude of options for the various personas that use an app. We have workspaces where fulfillers have everything that they need to quickly and effectively complete work orders. There are applets, which are individual pieces of functionality hosted on the variety of ServiceNow's mobile app library. There are service portal pages designed to be the single source of action for requesters where they can utilize what we are about to build here. Catalog items. Even to design something as complex as an experience, developers will rely on these wizard style of designers, constantly guiding them through the why behind every step they need to take to build something to completion. The third pillar is automation, ServiceNow's PS de resistance. <laughs> Under the automation header, we see a few flows, each representing a process that has been automated on our platform. Clicking one opens up the flow designer, your one-stop shop for all things automation, both inside and outside of ServiceNow. Any flow consists of two parts, a trigger and a sequence of actions. The trigger is essentially what turns the flow on. The trigger can be an interaction with a ServiceNow record like we see here. It could be a specific or relative amount of time or a variety of other things. What's really amazing is without even having interacted with this form before, we can simply read and see what this trigger is. This is not some label that was manually typed out as it would be on a variety of other platforms. This is a natural language generated title to ensure that any newcomer can get a really good of what's going on regardless of their ServiceNow expertise. We can also use this property to translate the sequence of actions and what they are automating. Actions are simply functions that ServiceNow is doing on behalf of a person. Things like updating records, managing attachments, querying for data, sending notifications. You know, all the parts of your job that probably aren't the highlight of your day. 
Actions are stored in collections called spokes, and many spokes are already included with software that you've already purchased on ServiceNow. If you're an ITSM customer, there's an ITSM spoke. If you're an HR customer, there's an HR spoke, etc. Actions can proceed one directly after another, but much more commonly is the need to create multiple branches of your process using flow logic. Any record that you have some sort of interaction with throughout the entirety of your flow is always going to be accessible through the data pane on the right-hand side of the screen. And you don't even have to go anywhere different to test your flows or even manage the executions of when it goes live. Flow Designer really is the pinnacle of consolidating process management. And finally, the fourth pillar is security. Definitely not the flashiest part of any demo, but definitely one of the most vital pieces of any good application. With ServiceNow being a role-based system, here, we not only have the capacity to create brand new roles, but intimately control how the ones that do exist interact with everything that we've built thus far. Now, some of you in the audience might be thinking to yourself, this is great and all, but I've spent my entire career coding. Is there any way to go deeper than this? Be not afraid. <laughs> if you recall from the beginning, AES is just one of two development environments that ServiceNow offers. For traditional developers, AES might be the fastest way to learn the building blocks of what makes a great ServiceNow application. But alternatively, your path might bring you to utilizing the more traditional platform studio that ServiceNow also offers. If you would like more information on this more pro coder focused studio studio, I will provide a link in the description down below. Using App Engine Studio, developers can get onboarded on the ServiceNow platform, lexicon, and application file types at lightning speed to start them off on their best foot forward to becoming a phenomenal ServiceNow developer. If any of this has piqued your interest and you're seeking to learn more, might I recommend our developer website. There, you not only have labs, guides, and docs right at your fingertips, you can get your very own free instance of ServiceNow in seconds. If you liked what you saw here today, go ahead and leave us a like. And if you're ready to dig deeper, also click subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Best of luck on your brand new developer journey. Stay hungry, stay humble, and I'll see y'all next time. Cheers.